Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. You, you, you get onto Waterworld, and um, how did that whole project come together? Was that Kevin leading the charge? Did you lead the charge? How did that whole thing get together? Well, uh, Kevin and I weren't getting along after Robin Hood. I won't even get into it, but we mm-hmm. weren't. And so um, somebody sent me the script, and um, it, I really liked it. And it was Larry Gordon, who at the time was the head of Fox. And, and um, um, he asked me to come in and talk to him, and I did. And sat there, and I was telling him, yeah, I really like this. You know, I think it's a really cool script, this Peter Rader script. Yeah. And uh, Larry goes, well, there's a huge movie star that's really interested in it, too. Really wants to do this. I'm like, oh, yeah, who's that? And he goes, Kevin Costner. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. And uh, anyway, long story short, Larry gets us back together again. And uh, we agreed to do it. And uh, that was the beginning. <laughs> You've heard all the stories. No, no, I, I know. I, I mean, we, everyone's heard the stories of, 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 you know, the legendary stories of Waterworld. And I've had Peter on the show as well. So I, I, I heard a lot of a lot of stuff from his point of view. He was like, Alex, I was on set for two or three days. I don't know, you know, however long he was a week or two or whatever. He goes, I just got to sit and watch some of the stuff. But again, just like Easter Island, like, hey, let's go shoot on Easter Island. You said, hey, let's go shoot this in the ocean, um, which I get it. Makes sense. But uh, I guess you underestimated the <laughs> power of nature and and everything. How how what was that like being in the middle of that storm? Literally and figuratively. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when I first decided, to, uh, again, you're still in that mode as a uh, you know, young filmmaker, like I can overcome anything. Mm-hmm. You, know, you throw at me, I'll figure it out. And I'll, I'll make it work. But I called Steven Spielberg. Uh, when I decided I want to do this and, you know, and I asked him, I said, uh, look, there's this project water world. It's all set on the, on the ocean. And you know, you did jaws and do I, do I really want to do this? And he goes, you may, he said, I would never work on the water again. And I'm like, okay. And, uh, you know, I didn't heed his advice and, uh, I went in and saw Sid Scheinberg, who was the head of universal, who, mm-hmm did the show and uh, I'm talking to him and I'm like, you know, we're talking about the budget and all this stuff. And I go, Sid, you know, we're going to be responsible and stuff, but you know, I was talking to Steven and, um, Steven tells me that the original schedule on jaws was 55 days <laughs> and they ended up shooting 155 days. And Sid just sits there for a second. He goes, I don't remember the schedule, but I do know they went 100% over budget. Wow. Right, okay. So I, I hope you know. I hope you remember that. He goes, "Oh, I do." And they were they were aware of the you know the, the danger. dangers of what could happen shooting on the water. <laughs> and and the thing that annoys me about people that you know criticize the movie and stuff is they you know there a lot of people felt like we were just being profligate that we just went out there and we were just you know, all sitting around eating bonbons and drinking, you know, pina coladas. <laughs> and we weren't, uh, it was, it was very tough, you know, yes, we were, you know, very well taken care of, but it was a very, very difficult picture. But anybody that shoots on the water like that is going to encounter it. And consequently, you know, 25 years later, that's why people do CGI. I, I don't know if that people will ever do something like that again, because so much of, what we did was in camera. It was not yeah. CGI. And you just don't appreciate the difficulty. It's just stuff you take for granted where, you know, you set up a shot, you've got a camera boat, you've got somebody on a boat in front of you, and then you've got background boats. You've got a horizon behind because you're always having to shoot so that you've got a clean horizon to maintain the notion that, you know, there's no land. <clears throat> so we picked the West Coast of the big island of Hawaii where there was like a 160 degree view out to open water, relatively uh, little traffic. That's where we chose to shoot. But when you set up a shot that looks very simple in the, in the film, like I was just describing, you don't realize that 
their currents. And so you set the camera up and your subject boat here in the background, they're all drifting differently. So you can't hold a frame. So right. it's ever to try to move things back into frame just to hold a frame. Ultimately, there were times where if the currents were really bad, you can't turn around and shoot towards land. You always have to shoot out toward the water. And sometimes the sun would be low and it's looking right. You're looking right into the sun. So you have to find all these variations for how you can get around that. There were times where we'd have to send divers down, attach a line to the boat we're trying to shoot, anchor it to the bottom on a pulley where they could move it and pull it to try to maintain sun control over the boat that was in front of camera. And so when you see it on film, you go, eh, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a boat and there's some background behind it. You don't realize what it took to do something that would be relatively simple on land to do it on water like that. And every day was like that. Every day. And, and, and everything you just described could be done in about five or ten minutes. It doesn't take a long time to send the divers down, lock in the boat, you control, you know, it, it, it just what when, when you're talking about Stephen and Jaws, I mean, he had one boat and a mechanical shark. You had like a floating city and it seemed to me, I know it wasn't hundreds, but it seemed like, you know, 20, 30, 40 support vehicles, whether it be, you know, land, um, water skis or boats or that it was, it was what Peter said. It's Mad Max on the water. It's that. We had a Navy. We had a Navy. Wow. We had a whole department that did nothing but run boats. I mean, it, you think about it. We had this atoll was anchored about a mile offshore outside of a harbor called Kauaiha. <laughs> literally the, the big floating atoll and there were multiple lines from that went down to the bottom. It was about a hundred feet deep and they anchored it on the bottom. They had to, otherwise it would drift away and it would rotate on those lines. But when you go out there, when you're doing a big scene, like a battle scene where you've got hundreds of extras and you've got special effects and stuff, you don't realize, okay, you've got a whole barge. that's nothing but porta potties, you know, and so you get up in the morning, you have to run all those people through wardrobe. You have to feed them. <sighs> you have to put them on boats and ferry them out to the atoll, get them in position for whatever shots you're doing. And then once you shoot for a little bit, it's lunchtime. And so then you have to ferry right. all those people back into shore to feed them and then go back out for the afternoon. And that's it, it's just incredibly cumbersome. I <laughs> I'm just baffled that the studio agreed to go down this road. I mean, everybody knew. Like, there's no way you can make a day. Did you ever make a day? Like, it's it's out of your control. A few times, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, original, I think our original schedule was... I think we finally agreed on like, like maybe 120 days. And I think, we, should, you know, all of them we shot 170 days. Jesus. That's actually impressive. <laughs> that you got it. So, I mean, you know, I defy anybody else to, you know, overcome it and do do what I think we did. It was uh it was tough. Like I said, and it's all most of it's in camera. Yes, there are effects in the show, but most of what you see was shot in camera. And so. and I heard there, and if I remember correctly, there was a was there a hurricane that destroyed a whole bunch of sets or something happened like that? You know, that was that was the rumor that the whole atoll sunk. Uh -huh. That's not true. Yes, oh, okay. we had we had a, we had an earthquake off the coast of Japan once one morning. We had to like move everybody in shore up high because we didn't know if there was going to be a tsunami or not. It, it never happened. <laughs> Thank but God. We lost, we lost another half day just on that. Um, but the the thing that did sink, there's one sequence where the mariner approaches. It's just it looks like this big. Oh, I don't know. It's like a big mushroom sticking up out of the water. It's a trading post. And <coughs> the smokers and Dennis Hopper have arrived there and they've killed everybody and they've rigged their arms to wave and stuff. And we shot that. That sank. That sank. But it was not the, the atoll. Okay. So, all right. So I remember at that time that the press and the town crucified the movie before a frame of it was even shown to people. It, you were being, I mean, it was, and I remember being, I was, I was there. I remember just from a distance looking at it and going, my God, they're pounding on poor Kevin Reynolds on this. Like, and I, so how, how do you direct? Cause I'm assuming you were aware of this. Oh yeah. So how do you direct? How do you deal with that kind of stress? 
it's it's very difficult. It's not it, it's my least favorite kind of filmmaking because there's so many forces working on you. You're you you really can't be flexible because when you have a shooting day that costs three hundred thousand oh dollars, you know you can't change your mind about things. Is right. you have to kind of stick with the plan even if you get on set and go ah well, that doesn't work that well. But if we change that, we lose a half a day and we can't afford to do that again. So you can't be flexible and you've got all these people looking over your shoulder, you know, and I understand cause it's a hell of a lot of money, <laughs> but it's, it's not a fun way to work. It's, it's just, it's not a fun way to work. I'll, I'll tell you one story that kind of summed up the whole press thing for me. Cause we had, you know, guys who show up in speed boats and try to come by and shoot it and stuff and all these inflammatory things and exaggerations. One day the, uh, we were shooting a sequence outside the harbor on the catamaran and I had a cam the camera guys up on the mast of it about 40 feet up, two guys. And I was trying to do a shot where you're looking down on the activity down below and then tilt up to the horizon and we're anchored offshore and the swell comes up and the catamaran starts kind of going like this. And I look over and the mast is kind of bending a little bit like that. And so I turned to the boat guy, boat master, and I said, Bruno, is this safe? And he looks up at it and goes, no. <laughs> okay, well, we have to wrap out of this and go inside because we can't have these two guys fall off here. So we did. We had to wrap, go back inside the harbor, shoot something else, lose another half day. Okay, the next day, our publicist got <clears throat> phone from the States, some journalist who goes, okay, I've had this confirmed by two sources, so don't lie to me. I want you to tell me about the two camera guys that were killed in the accident yesterday. He goes, what? He goes, don't lie to us. We know this happened and you guys are covering up. So tell us the truth. We know you lost two people in an accident yesterday. He goes, it didn't happen. That was the kind of stuff that went on. Oh my God, I can't. Look, directing a film is arguably one of the most stressful things a human being can do. And again, war and all of that, I understand. But in the creative arts, absolutely one of the most difficult things you can do. Right. Working in Hollywood in the studio system is probably one of the most difficult things you can do. Working with a $150, $175 million budget on your shoulders and the stress of that is one of the most difficult things you can do. And then having to deal with that kind of lunacy. I, I, I mean, you must have, you, it's kind of like a presidency, like when you see one come in and then four years later, eight years later, they, they've aged 50 years. I'd have to imagine that that happened to you at the end of this process. It does, it does. And it changes you, you know, it really changes you and your outlook and all. And, uh, you know, after that, I, I don't really like those kind of movies, to mm -hmm. be honest. They're not fun. They're just not fun. And the making of them or the kind of story of, or the storytelling aspect of it? The story is interesting, but the making of them is so difficult and it's not as organic. I prefer smaller pictures where you have more control. Mm -hmm. and you can be more flexible than, than big ones like that. I mean, you still see it today. I mean, all these big superhero movies and stuff, they're very much like that. You know, but it's all it's CG. A, but it's a lot of CG now. It's all CG, but it's still it's it's hundreds of millions of dollars and it's filmmaking by committee. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, it's just not that organic. Some people thrive on that and they like it. I'm not one of those people. I, I prefer to do, uh, smaller things where you're, it's more your do domain. So the movie comes out and everyone's like, it's the biggest bomb in history and all this stuff, which was such, you know, for, to use a term of, of our, of our time, fake news, uh, <laughs> because it ended up actually doing well and and then i was talking to peter and he said it's one of the most valuable ips and profitable ips in the entire catalog of universal studios right so do you feel a little vindicated <laughs> yeah i mean i look at some there are pictures that were much people lost they lost a lot more money than Waterworld. it's just once you sort of get tainted with oh with, yeah uh, you know, you can't lose that. It's very difficult. I mean, Hollywood, it's more interesting that, that something's controversial and it's going bad than to hear that everything's going well. well That's boring. It's more interesting, of course. It's more interesting. And so they thrive on that. And 
somebody told me the first time they screened a picture in New York or something for critics and they walked out and, and this one critic was so disappointed and he goes, well, it didn't suck. And that was his comment. <laughs> right. Like they wanted it to be the they worst. It so badly, <laughs> be horrible. And he was really disappointed. he's disappointed that it was ah, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> I actually, I, I watched it when I watched it. I watched it again recently. It's fun. It's a fun, it, it's just a fun film. It's just a good, good adventure film. Dennis Hopper, again, chews up <laughs> the scenery. You're being kind. I mean, there are a lot of problems with the movie. There's I know, but, but you got to. I know. I, I look. I under. I understand. Look. I mean, but it's enjoy. I look. I enjoyed it. It is an enjoyable film. Um, and it's a just a good fun adventure. Um, uh, adventure film. But it is, it's one of those films that is historically, you know, tainted. But the truth, and that's what I try to do, even in my little way, with Peter's interview and now with yours. I'm like, no, it's arguably one of the most profitable IPs that they have, and I think they're working. I know you can't say yay or nay, but I heard they're working on trying to do something new with it. Because it's a it's a great IP. I you know I don't know if they're going to do another picture or not. You know they made a fortune off the ride. Oh, you know, oh yeah. Oh, you know it's been going for twenty five years now. It's still it's still there. I've I've seen that show probably three four five times and maybe more in my in my life and it's still going. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to indiefilmhustle.com.